Yo, what's goody fam? Welcome back to the Human Behavior Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Dewan Mutunga. This is a podcast about uh, mindset, leverage, and psychology mm. to um, ultimately create a better business, a better life, and a better you. Um, mm. This is going to be a, a goody because I got my brother with me. Mm. Um, so real quick, we probably uh, almost a decade in now, mm-hmm. and um, this is... This is a a brother to me, a mentor to me, somebody who who uh, made it his business to to get a, a young raw young boy <laughs> under the wing and, and yeah, uh, yeah. give me some some game and some polished some polished wisdom. Um, but we do life together, we do business together. Um, it's a family man, a husband, a businessman, a professional athlete, all the things. Mm. Um, but really, when it comes to manhood and leadership mm. right this is this is you know my go-to mm. and um yeah my appreciate brother chris crump what's good with you what's up fam what's good brody you already know yeah yeah man yeah. super excited man proud of you bro man i man psh, man we just me and my wife we just when it was at your wedding bro that was the first i'm trying i'll tell my wife i'm trying to think of a time where i was at somebody else's thing that had nothing to do with me and i felt pure joy in my heart Mm. as a man like i was like bro like when i say i was just so happy for you and kim bro like bro i was just like yo you deserve you deserve you put the, i know the work you put in to be yeah. a man who could come home to a beautiful queen and your family bro like i was just so happy for you bro yeah no i appreciate you because uh you see when it was about to go left <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something <laughs> it was so yo Crump and his wife jumped in mm. like seamlessly. Like the uh I felt like the child with the door in my lock. <laughs> like y'all like jumped into action and just made it to the point where everybody thought that they actually worked yeah. at the venue. That's actually facts. That they worked at the venue. Like you got up to go say something. Mommy was like, oh he <laughs> <laughs> Mommy was like, Oh, I'm like, yeah. you don't work here? And it and it's things like that, you know. Me and my wife just celebrated 17 years yeah, yesterday, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's things like that where we get in, where we get into the mix, and we just do what we do, what we've always been doing. Yep. That I, rem- it, it, it's kind of like those experiences are reminds of why we got married, why we together, but we've been together for 22 years. But just you start to see, like, um, man, like the blessing is like I got a woman that if I have to just hop in, no questions asked. We in like whatever that is, and man, we want to make y'all happy because you had a situation where you got a pop up wedding, so nobody even knows that it's actually a wedding. So between nobody knows it's actually a wedding, your wife is not actually there. You're trying to be like a host of your family at a gathering lunch, uh-huh. so like you're really not trying to show <laughs> your cards. So I'm like, run to play, Crump. You know what I mean? You know when I knew it was real because. uh and we, let me just say this. Y'all are lucky I don't use this platform to trash y'all. <laughs> if, if I wanted to be a demon, I really would violate, but I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> but the, the the young lady came, and that's when I was like, yeah, we're we going to have to get up out of here. Cause, and Jay was like, no, we're not. We're going to be here for an hour. I was like. Got it, cause you know that <laughs> that Negro when and he got the he, he literally him and God got a whole different relationship, whole different, bro. When he said that, I was like, okay, cool. We we on the we on the bull today, okay? Yeah. And she said, uh, she said my name wrong. I said Dwayne. And Nick hit her with the calm. She grabbed oh, yeah. him by the arm and yeah. was like, "It's Dwayne." Mm-hmm. And I said, "That was the most calm gangster thing." Oh, she. she. At that point, I knew. Yeah, she's sweet and savage, bro. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. That was that was yeah. like she hit her with the little arm grab real quick. Like, let me get you together. This is where we. Yeah. And I just walked out. I was like, okay. Yeah. 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 Y'all jumped in the mode, and to be to, we already been locked in, but that was. I was saying to somebody, um, that was probably the best day of my life. Mm, wow. For a whole bunch of my pops was come there. on man, you know what I mean? Like got, y'all got to see yeah, we saw that all man. of that, and um, 
that day doesn't happen mm. if you and Nick don't jump in the mm. way y'all do. So y'all have no idea. Now I gotta. Now we got generosity war because we gotta <laughs> like. Oh man, man, we was already locked in, but that was just like a whole nother level. Like she doesn't understand because we was trying to get it together before she got there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah but I know. Uh, yeah, I love it, man. But yeah, I'm here for it, bro. Yeah, man. So you know, I know before we was uh before. We started recording, you know, we just catching up on man, man stuff, fatherhood, kids and mm-hmm. and all of the above. But a, a lot of this, this, it's always a space for us to just be men. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think, you know, I tip my hat to you being intentional about very creating that space for the men that is in your life and the yeah. men you're around and the men that you coaching and the men that you leading. Yeah. Um. Because sometimes you don't even know to think about certain aspects of yourself mm. or certain journeys or paths until somebody makes you aware. Yeah. And I know for me, you know, from the first time we met and you realized, you know, like, because my cousin was a blessing to you mm. and you just sort of threw me under the wing like, oh, nah, this is. Yeah. And you know, you. Yeah. You're. You might find a way nicely to come tell me about myself, but even when I'm crashing out, yeah, hey, you, you, you tripping? Let's let's get over here. You let's gotta do that. Yeah, yeah, I have I have infinite empathy for men. Where does yeah. that come from? <clears throat> I, I think it definitely starts with my father, but in my own journey, in my personal development, as my manhood, and 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 I got the things where I had a great father. You know, a great example. <clears throat> you know, raised in the church, came home every day. I had the same bed my whole life. Mm. Um, and I'm a first generation to do a lot of things as far as go to college, be a professional athlete and all this. But I'm saying to myself, I had a great father. I was raised in the church. I get married to my college sweetheart, right? I become an educator. I'm most influential staff member of the year, two years in a row. To a, I become an executive director. Then I become sitting on boards. Then I become a successful entrepreneur making six figures in multiple companies. Then I'm traveling the world, 30 countries. Then I'm doing all of this. I have two beautiful, talented, amazing children. I do all of this and I still don't know what I'm doing. So imagine a brother. Let's just take out one element of my, my part. They didn't have a dad. And I, was, I, had a, I had a stable, consistent, respected man in the community as my father. But then I had a college sweetheart. Then I was in church my whole life, and I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm still struggling. I'm still figuring things. Things are still evolving. Me flexing on, yeah, it's a nice Instagram flex to say I've been married for 17 years, but I still don't know what I'm doing. I've, I literally learned how to even ask questions to my wife last week. So for me to be somebody who studied psychology, sociology, education, spiritual development, I had to shadow nine pastors. I had to uh, build a whole school. I had to develop a whole curriculum. I had to start a whole company. I had to do all of these things, and I still don't know what I'm doing. I can only imagine the brother mm. who's out there like, I'm trying to get started with a woman. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do this aspect, and he's getting judged because he is grown. He does have tattoos. He does have a job, so he should be able to. It's like, bruh. And what 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 the world is is insensitive to is that a man has three things that never die. They got a God, they got a monster, and they got a little boy. Mm. But the challenge is the God allows you to choose, whereas the little boy and the monster, they pull on you all the time, every single day. And a lot of men, without having those subconscious skills, soft skills, you know what I mean? Those those things to help develop how to deal with the little boy in me, the monster in me, and access to God in me. If you don't have those skills and to navigate that daily in your spirit, yep. in your mind, like that's why if, if I look at a brother, I already know he's struggling. He ain't even got to say, hey, what's good, fam? You know, we'll do the pound. I brace it, but I already know he's struggling. So then my my discernment is trying to see like, what area. Let me look at his profile. Oh man, he getting he getting beat right now in this area. I just text a, a person today. He's like, bro, how did you know that? I'm like, bro, you a man. You, if you a man, you married, you already struggling. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to ask. Oh, you a man, you got children. You are like it's certain things. You just tell me. 
I don't like I'm a, but you got a job, you look good. I said, oh, cool, the Jordans look dope. You know what I'm saying? Like you a VP now? That's what's up. But are you married? Oh yeah, you struggling, bro. You got children? Oh yeah, you struggling, bro. You know what I mean? Like you you grown in this real world, you struggling. What do what don't people understand about that? Or, and and how and, and and just for people, why do you automatically notice about men? Like why is this like a default? Um, I don't know. It's it kind of been my work too. I think like, um, in education and in personal development, like systemically for a community, like if you look at how does anybody profit, um, uh, capitalism wise from any economy, you profit off a man not being in his rightful place. Like for, for a woman to get section eight, you know what the qualifier is? The man can't be in the house. If the man can give you the government pay you money. Do you know the government makes way more money off child support than the actual woman and the child? So they, re- they the system, I was just talking to a guy who's the first like, oh, it's divorce lawyer. Oh, I got to make sure it's end of the year. I got to get my numbers right. I got to get more divorces. So everything is pitched towards making the man, uh, make it, put him in prison, put him in the hood, put him somewhere so we can make money off the dysfunction of all of that, the division of all of that. Mm. Every man, every that's a hundred percent success rate of every strong man in a home. Guess how much government assistance that home needs? Zero. Zero. Guess how much government intervention that home needs? Zero. Guess how much organizations and charities that help women and children need to put them on the register to come check on them every three months? Zero. If you want to stabilize a whole nation, a whole community, all you have to do is put a strong, mature, disciplined, responsible man in the home. All the issues in that home is resolved. Every last one of them. Now we got stats from the Census 2020 report that a man raising children is just as effective as both healthy parents in the household. If you want to make a child dysfunctional, put them with a single mother three times to all type of ills in the world that they're going to get by just taking the dad out. Mm. So now we know that. Now we ain't got to guess no more. So we know how powerful, but here's the thing. Men are trying to harness the power. We don't really know what to do with it, but everybody else is scared of it. You don't get security for a child and a woman. Why do you get security? You get security for a man. You don't hold your, po- you, a woman don't hold her purse tighter because she see two children and a, and a woman. I gotta, let us see a man. Oh, I got to be mindful of no, they brain on fire 10 different ways. But guess how much secure they worry about when they walk in with their man? Yep. They don't even think about it. I'm with my man. I'm good. Yeah, I hear women talking about, yeah, I, I want to, uh, like, I, I can turn my brain off when I'm with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know bro. I mean? it's, it's, it's real. And then it's hard to explain if you have an experience, because we talked about that too. So many people had different traumas and dysfunctions, and I, and that hurts my heart. That hurts my heart because it makes it harder for men who are really trying to be men that as I'm trying to navigate and identify and figure this space out, you're subconsciously already threatened by me or disgusted by me. It's a it's an interesting dichotomy because it's like you and when I say you, I'm saying the world speaks to the value of a man or why a man is needed or m- you know, women are socialized to get a man, right? To get married. That's like the pinnacle. But it's like, if this is something that you acknowledge has value, then why are you afraid of it? Or why is it like, you know, uh, something to go to war with? Because again, it goes back to the dysfunctions, the traumas, the abuse, the neglect, that's a real experience. These are real experiences that people had with men. So the cause and effect of that is that it affects the next, next man who's really just trying to be a solid man, but you're playing these subconscious traumas of how to interact with this person based on your previous experience with another man that may have happened years ago but never got addressed. The only I've only experienced women who really are healthy in a space to receive a man as a man because their older woman in their life prepared them for one. Mm. 
most women who really understand and accept men to be a man and let them be that, create that safe space for them, their mother or their grandmother prepped them for that. Like, yeah, this when you when you dealing with a man, they was groomed. They, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be trained for that. Yeah, space. I was just, um, you know, we was offline. I, again, and I forget it was a it was something I was I was watching, and the dude was like, you know, oftentimes when you speak about the absence of a man, we we default to how it affects a young boy, but we never look to how it creates challenges for a young girl oh, or sure. a woman. Because if you if you never had a man around, you don't know what it is to experience a man as a child and that discipline or the protection or the you know, the provision and discernment of a man. And then when you grow up to be a woman, now you you don't know how to receive mm. the value that a man brings because you didn't have one around or you didn't have a certain type of man around. And so, yeah, it creates an issue with boys mm -hmm. who grow to be men, but also little girls who grow to be women. And, and now these two people got to function in society together and create a family and... Yeah, and we're all being uh, unfortunately influenced. Some of us are, are very conscious and, and aware to block the influence, but it's very hard. The gender war is real. Oh yeah, the red pill, blue pill I, is real. As far as the as far as the influencing yeah. of you and your narrative of that. So if you're not very intentional about understanding, hey, men are the most important, but the women are the most powerful. Like I don't like I don't shy away from how powerful women are, but the most important I like that is the man. Like, cause that's going to stabilize all of this. Right. But the person that make it better, the person that makes it creative, the person that makes it like an, a whole experience. Oh, the woman does like the women comes fully loaded, fully packed. Right. Shout out to Miles Monroe. Like women really are already ready to incubate whatever you bring to the table to blow it up. But you got to have something that brought to the table. So what's frustrating for a lot of women is that I'm trying to be the, the foundation, the stabilizer while I'm still trying to also create, you know what I mean? And that's where the stress and the dysfunction and the disconnect happens. Yeah, because you know then I saying? feel like we can get into the whole systematic oh, racism bro. and the government initiatives but, and but, all that. But, but what, what blessed me to travel in the world, here's the thing that did bless me traveling the world and living in another country. I got to see other cultures do it. Mm, yep. So I came in my southern black American patriot way of seeing the world because that's the only thing I knew. And I saw how insensitive I was. I saw how ignorant I was. I saw how privileged I was and I, how entitled I was. Like, I saw a lot of stuff about me as an adult. And the only way I even saw it as an adult is because I lived in another country and I traveled the world. And I experienced other ethnic groups, right? I experienced a Jewish family. I experienced an Indian family. I experienced a Filipino family. I experienced different islands, you know what I mean? Like, and I experienced my Caucasian brother, Anglo-Saxon brothers and sisters as well. And so I was open to what they would say to each other in their house and how they would see each other in their house. Mm -hmm. Whereas it was different from us. Like I come from a family of poverty. So like they like everything's fear based. You know what I mean? Even the money. You know what I mean? So it's like watch the white man, watch your money, watch the pastor. Like why is everything's fear based? But then when I met somebody who um, was like had his home in Bermuda. He lived by the golf course, but there's like, 10 foot Indonesian doors, right? An angel waterfall that goes into the infinity pool that looks like the infinity pool goes into the ocean based on where you're sitting on the deck. That the, there's a private mar <laughs> uh, a, a marble uh, shower outside of his office that has three skin. He was a Forex trader. And, uh, and he said him and his wife was like, where's the best country in the world to raise a child and they visited eight countries and they was from um, Sweden and it was like Bermuda's the best, the best country for us in this, in this current climate of our Christian faith of what we want to raise a child. And every room had a Trinity point because they said they wanted the Holy ghost anointing to be in every room and they wanted that to rain on their children as they walked through their house. That's intentional design, bro. Like, so it's like, but they saw a money, just a tool. I, I serve a God. Cause you know, I'm the fullness of God's thoughts. So like I have access to everything that's in this earth. So I just had to touch, touch my creator and he's going to give, he's going to reveal how I, how I know what I need to be doing with me. Compare from a culture of community. It's like, bro, we, you know what I mean? Let me do some refund. Let me do, you know, we got food stamps. I'm like, look, I give you a hundred food stamps. You give me $60. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I went from 
we go in grocery shopping, but it's like, okay, we got to go to the meat house to get the meat. We got to go to the bread house to get the bread. And then we put our other stuff on layaway at Kmart. So it's like, you, I, I go from like, yo, y'all, how y'all spend it, buddy? Like, you know, and it's like, no, that, that, it's just money. And the, or, you know what I mean? How you respect your parents, how you respect your God, how you respect it. I'm like, oh, I was, we just go to church. You know, we hoop, we holler. We can't, well, we go back and act however we want to act. I'm like, no, nah, that's not, that's just, that's putting on a show. That's not really respecting your God. Like, you got to respect mm. your God every day. I was like, oh, I, until I met some, you know, people from another country, and then they, they were from another faith, and they was from another ethnic group, but it was like, I was like, oh, that's what it really looks like? Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, how do you respect your government? That, you know, proud to be Bermuda. It's like the number one song in Bermuda. But it's like, they see it culturally connected to the people and not to a constitution. So it's like, I don't even know these things that I have these subconscious bias that I operate in until I get exposed to a lifestyle that lives it day to day. I'm like, Man, I don't even think like that. And it's not until I was into, you know, interwoven into these countries and communities that I started to re deprogram and reprogram myself. Mm. So, so even me being in the space now as a successful coach is not from an intellectual knowledge base. This is just compound commitment that I'm living off of now. You talked about me, Mitch, but all, almost everybody I mentored from 10 plus years ago, they're blowing up. So that's why I'm blowing up. But it's not because I, I started coaching this year. It's not because I got some information now off Google. It's because I've been committed. Like I'm living off all my commitments, being married young, raising my children, coaching and mentoring people like I'm living off the 10 plus years of I took all of these experiences. I put it in a place where I shared it with others. They're starting to win in a real way and they're giving me kudos and I'm getting access to things that I'm not even asking for. You know what it's I mean? 10,000 hours. It, I'm, I'm, I'm living proof of like, I'm like, dang, I'm, I've been doing what I've been doing for 10. I've been doing what I've been doing for 15 years. It's just that that compound of staying to it. I'm living like the, for the first time, real benefits of, of that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's interesting too because this is like <clears throat> the you know me just l knowing you's like this is like act two. People don't even realize <laughs> that you was like a professional athlete. Yes, operating at the highest level and like that's that is a journey in and of itself and mastery in and of itself. Yeah. So to go from being a professional athlete, competing all across the world and playing against the best players in the world and then go from that to dominating leadership you but know, see, in different sectors. The reason why I can jump across sectors because I had what they call in the scouting world transferable assets, right? So I develop a blueprint to be a one percenter. So I can be so I know the blueprint to be a one percenter in anything now. Yeah, you gotta get that game. So what so me becoming a uh, context matters. So me becoming a professional athlete in a sport that's so hard to become a professional athlete with no trainer, no exposure, no AAU and no parents who ever even played sports. You have to go back and reverse engineer that because this, the, the subtle skills that I developed, the personal fortitude, the mental focus, the, the competitive fire that all was nurtured from um, a place of like, really, it was a blank canvas. So I have a dream. That's all I had. Right. So let's, a lot of people got a dream. But what allowed me to access the pro ranks of that dream was what I did for those 15 years, 20 years leading up. And that was I work on my craft without you telling me. I study the greats. I mimic. I practice them like I work more in practice than I did when they, when people was watching. But nobody was prompt that intrinsic motivation for me to do that because the end game was so burning in my belly to get. Right. So the, the question is not your dream. The question is your desire, because if you got a dream, but there's no desire, you're not going to have intrinsic motivation. So my me working on my craft and then like being upset at myself, not that I wasn't playing well because I was. But I would look at film to look at my turnovers. I would look at film of myself of looking at my mistakes. And then I would say, if I'm studying the greats of where they are today, how do I beat the local greats? The neighborhood superstars, mm -hmm. the old high school legends, like my cousin them that was older than me. So the skill set of all of those attributes, and there's a number of little things that we can break down. But when it came to being a husband, I wanted to be in the husband hall of fame. So I studied the husband goats. 
But then who's the <laughs> husband? Who's the local husband? Then I study film on myself. How did I do in this area? You know what I mean? So what you're seeing now is the, the Thomas Edison effect of, hey, man, I'm not telling you I know everything it is to be a husband, but I do know 10,000 things not to do to be mm. a good husband because I've been in the, I've been in the lab so long working on my you know, making adjustments. And so for me, it's like whether it's a leader, whether it's an entrepreneur, whether it's a coach, whether it's a trainer, I know the blueprint to get the one percent where it has nothing to do. Here's the here's the most important principle. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Like, I fully understand that. Like, if I want to be a one percenter, it's all on me. And the question is, will I take on that responsibility? Yo, what's goody, fam? Listen, I know, I know. I'm going to let you get back to the episode. But I wanted to take a minute to let you know about the Human Behavior Mastery course. Yes, we have a course that we put together for coaches, consultants, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I know you're listening to the pod and it's all of this numbers and the, the adaptive and the natural, the D, the I, the attributes. We put together a comprehensive course to walk you through exactly how to understand each one of the personality types, each one of the values, and we're going to show you exactly how to get the most out of each type, what things you need to avoid, what environments to put you in, and what pieces to put around you to be successful. So if you're looking at taking your business, your life, or your relationship to the next level, make sure you go check out the Human Behavior Mastery course. Back to the episode. Yeah, that's a... And I think the the mentality of... And again, you know, just being on the line and being connected to to E and mm. you know the, that whole tree. Come on, those paradigm shifts give you access to those choices. That that perspective. I'm a big, you know, I'm a big fan. I, I feel like diversity of perspective mm. makes us better, makes Come us on. smarter, right? So, you know, I might be giving you. The, the Bronx and you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, uh, you, you giving me, I'm going to say it wrong. Wherever, wherever you from. <laughs> Akawaha, Florida. Shout out to the Waha, man. Aka, Akawaha. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Bermuda, Akawaha. You know what I'm you saying? You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, br- 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 um, Waha raised me, but Bermuda made me. You know, I, I uh, came back to America uh, four years ago and I saw America completely different. I was pitched a version of America as a victim, as a you know, black man from the South, the system up to get you energy. But living in a country that struggles with its GDP because it don't have uh, a market economy, number one, but also natural resources to develop and nurture in a way that it limits you economically. And then coming back to America, I see why people now, when I came back after 14 years of being away, I see why people risk their entire life just to get on this land. Really? I, see why, I see why people... We'll get on a freight boat. I, I see why people will like go through a tunnel underneath ground. Cause once you touch the ground of America, there is legitimately no that's not one single excuse you can have why you're not financially free or financially stable. It's not one. Besides, you're a very undisciplined and ungrateful person. Mm. So I came here. Me and my wife moved here. We left two six figure careers in Bermuda. We came here with no job, and in less than two years, we both was making six figures. And we both was making six figures out of out of an industry that we wasn't in. So new industry. New industry. Both doing it individually. Both individually, in less than two years, making six figures. Yeah, because you was just saying, now, it's just now that you and wifey starting to work together. Work together. So y'all... Mm. So then that, even that's dope, because now y'all taking all of that... Yes. And bringing it to the table for and, all, and, and all I was, things crumpler. All things crumpler, man. Shout out to my wife, man. She's amazing. But I was, man, I was in Bermuda with pure resentment. Man, I, when I visit, I used to do my business trips in the States, and I used to, you know, me, obviously me and E is close, and Jeremy and David Shans, like, it's like you see him, but, like, I, I was giving guys advice. I was encouraging guys. I was giving guys some game. And then, like, I'm in Bermuda, and I'm literally seeing, I, and I'm going to just call a spade a spade, but Shans, um, Jeremy blowing up. And I'm like, bruh, I'm in Bermuda stuck. Mm. Like, I just felt in Bermuda stuck. But what I was learning in Bermuda that, that the let's say the Atlanta entrepreneurs didn't really have. I was living in the hub of international business. 
So what I was exposed to on a regular basis was how the big bosses run on a global scale. So the one thing that the gap when I came here that a lot of entrepreneurs didn't have, they didn't have big boss systems. So my resentment had me in a country and a community that was constantly exposing me of what it looks like to run an organization and a co- which which how I was able to scale because I had a skill set, but skill set individually and a skill set collectively, like as far as yeah. galvanizing a group of people from all different races and stages, like that's a whole different yeah. monster. So when I came here, like guys was like, oh, I got my thing, I'm doing my thing, but I don't know how to build a team, run a system. And now my value, my reputation of capital in the marketplace, it now you you're in the right place. It, yo, it's crazy you say that because I feel similarly being in New York, right? Mm. Working on Wall Street, kind of seeing how it's done at the highest level, just being in an environment where, you know, if you make it here, you make it anywhere, yeah. ultra competitive, whatever. And then coming and, and seeing folks in the A and quite a few people have been like, yo, bro, if you come down here, there's, first of all, there's nothing like you because it just, you you bring in something new into the space. Mm. And again, that same thing, business at the highest level, like the nuts and bolts and how mm. to put all of that stuff together. It's just like, what we have, and I would think what makes, you know, the, the movement in Atlanta special is just, there is brilliance on display mm. by black people. Yeah. We right. have brilliance on display mm. often, early, often, and continuously. Come on. But what separates those legacy brands and those mm. generational businesses is the infrastructure. Come on. The very first lesson I got my very first day working on Wall Street, it was a SVP, was like, Infrastructure supports outcomes. Mm. Never forgot that. Every system is perfectly designed to produce the results that it gets. And the results that are being produced at this moment is based on the current systems. Facts. If you want to change the results, change the system. That's it. That's it. Your marriage, whatever your whatever your marriage is producing, the system that you guys created is perfectly designed to create the results that it's currently getting. The same for your business, the same for your health. The same for your mentality, the same for your attitude, like the system you currently have, it is perfect for the results you're getting right now. Yeah, James, James Clear, um, who's the author of Atomic Habits, mm-hmm. he says that your life basically is a reflection, is, is a lagging result of your habits and systems. Mm-hmm. Your bank account is a lagging result of your financial habits, right? Mm-hmm. Your, your body is a f- lagging result of your health. I mean, your like exercise, mm-hmm. your your thought process, how you articulate yourself Come is on. a lagging result of your reading and writing and things like that, right? It is so what it is, like, bro. Like I, so much. So I'm so aware of this, right? You know, let's keep it a buck. You got the crib, I got the house, I got the cars, I got the kids, I got the dog. I want to check out, bro. I want to land a plane. I'm going to keep it above me. I'm 40. Reese, listen to me, bro. Bro, when you this when you this many years of serving people and committed to this thing and talking about now, now people say, oh, and somebody said, Crummy, I mean, you've been doing this for decades. I was like, you say decades? Oh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I don't know about dec- uh, at least a decade, but I'm like, because here's why I want to land a plane because I know if I, if I God's going to do it because I, I already know how he talking to me. For me to grow, I'm going to have to develop another level of discipline, some new habits, learn some new skills. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Really, you talking. I, I really, you talking. Dude, I really, I really don't. I, deep, I just want to chill, watch the game. My kids are teenagers. They about, I'm about to buy Jada a whip. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm good. But God's like, nah, bro, I just got you to a place to get you stable Enjoy your kids. I want you to enjoy your kids. That's, that's how you're talking to me. I want you to enjoy your kids. But you're going to have to level up, bro. Your marriage got to level up. You got to level up. Your leadership has to level up. That's why I was in the book reading when you pulled up. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, I'm mean, in the car reading. And I was like, bro, I don't even do this stuff like I'm excited. 
I don't do this stuff like, you know, I just God got a burning in my heart and I just feel so convicted. I have none of that energy because you, what what I don't tell you about being a one percenter in anything is that there's a cost to pay. Yep. And I've experienced paying the cost. Mm -hmm. There's a lot I had to pay personally to become a professional athlete. There's a lot I have to pay personally to stay married. There's a lot I have to pay personally to raise my kids in my house their entire lives. There's a lot I have to pay to build a communities and build organizations. There's a lot I'm tired of paying. So I ain't even on no energy like, yeah, I want to flex and stun and show all y'all. Listen to me, bro. There's a cost to pay for this. Mm -hmm. So you all say, yo, crumb, I want man, I mean, your wife is beautiful, and your children are beautiful, and your company is beautiful. Yeah, bro, but there's a cost to pay. Somebody got to pay it. And this do every day. And I'm very conscious of whatever that is you want. It's, if it's up, it's going up. Oh, yeah, there's a cost to pay for that, bro. And you don't even see all the costs. You you think you know what you know, but there, if it's something beyond you, the cost is beyond you too. So like, I was like, yeah, I want me and my wife to work together. That sounds that sounds that sounds very romantic. It's a it's a noble it's a noble <laughs> task. But bro, the level of planning and communication and understanding and empathy and like, bro, like. We had to go to a whole new level, and it cost. I, I broke out in a panic attack. For the first time in my life, I'm a grown man, broke out in a panic attack, dealing with overwhelmed stress mm. of trying to manage what I was managing. And I, so I don't, I don't look at my next phase, even though I see God is trying to reveal it to me. I'm, I'm with resistance in it, not because you know I want the best for me and I want to win and all of that. Like I'm, yes, I want that, but I also fully understand there's a cost to pay. Yeah, and it's 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 crazy that you say it like that because I I within the last week uh, I'm I'm nasty with the notes I be putting all sorts of notes but it was just on my spirit heavy and it was you know it was like because me and you specifically often talk about just having that dog that just mm. like that need to be that challenge that oh, that man. energy and a lot of people don't understand. When you got a motor like that and you just like maniacal, bro, and and I and I and I crossed it over too far, you know. Yeah, I, we it's it's it. You have to be an extremist to to be that right. And to your point, the the note that I wrote it, you can have it all, but you can't have it all at once. Mm. And I'm like, I don't think it's a coincidence that it came to me. Now that I've kind of like reset, I feel like I'm in a, I got a second chance at like, okay, family, yeah, man, business, bless you, bro. all the things, you can have it all. Come on. But you can't have it all at once, so you got to choose. Mm. Mm. And my and growing up, my, my father would, <laughs> shout out to my pops, man. Uh, my father would always say, um... You can't get a hard time for free. Mm. You got to pay a cost to receive something bad. He be like, if I got to give you a whooping, you had to do something to earn. Come on. Earn so it. if you got to earn something bad, why not go earn something good? Mm. Why not put the effort in? You, it's still energy that you exerting. Yeah, but I want to go back to that that dog, right? Because I'm being humble. I'm being humble. This is this the first time in my life to be keep it above oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. forty years old that across the across the planet I'm humble, bro. I, I am truly for the first time operating in humility and gratitude, like not saying it, but operating in it. And I would say it's not it's not by it's not by bended knee, it's not by will. Yeah. I know you, <laughs> bro. Don't TMI. Don't get to <laughs> don't get to. Me. I, I am a full blown bulldozer in, in in a lot of ways when I when it's time to get things done. But I, bro, I, I, done, I done mellowed out a lot, um, because life has humbled me. Mm -hmm. you know, life has truly humbled me, and um, it's cool to say you got the dog and you got this and you got that. Um, but God is doing some stuff in my heart to make me more sensitive and aware of others, and not just making me aware, but helping me with the desire to really want to see them win in such a special yep. way as a, as a desire of mind, 
Not just like, man, that's what's up. My guy, I see you. My turn. You know what I'm saying? Time me to turn up. Time me. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm really good. And I'm really actually happy for you. And I'm happy that I can support in any way. And that's genuinely all. There's nothing else. There's no other desire whatsoever. For me, being such a competitive guy, everything was a com competition. Even my wife. You know what I'm saying? So I had to really pull back to be like, bro, like you are tripping. Like, I'd be tripping, bro. Like, I'm as much as it's dope to say I've achieved the things that I've achieved, it don't come at the cost of me fighting my flesh. Mm. And now the stuff that I achieve means so much to me. I'm at a place in my consciousness where I refuse to let my flesh sabotage what I built. And so my flesh is so strong because I thought, man, if, if I get the degree, I'm straight. If I get the wife, I'm straight. If I get the house on the hill, thousands and thousands of square foot kids, like I'm straight. I make six figures, I'm straight. My flesh ain't going nowhere, bro. Mm -hmm. My monster ain't going nowhere, man. And um, it's humbled me because I thought achieving stuff will resolve things. Matter of fact, probably expose some things. Yep. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's like, okay, I'm going to always have to deal with this flesh. So I'm going to just acknowledge how strong it is. Now, it ain't the most powerful thing in me, but it's, it, it is there. And I'm going to make sure I'm very disciplined about acknowledging its presence, but also addressing it in a way where, like I said, that God in me is more powerful. It can do more things, but I have to, it's, I'm fully walking in the space of it's not it's not me that's really allowing me to win. Is is God giving me the liberty of choice to allow me to make a decision to not let my flesh overtake me? And by his grace and his mercy, through things that's out of my control, I get a phone call. I get a text. I get a DM. I get an email. I run into somebody at LA Fitness. I'm not orchestrating that stuff, man. Mm. I'm not going to act like I'm orchestrating that stuff. Like now my life is being blessed on some. I'm just going to be conscious and I'm going to work daily. And that's all I'm putting into it. And I'm going to let God do his thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, It's the, it's the awareness piece. Mm -hmm. Just being aware of what's happening and relinquishing mm -hmm. control. Right. So, I'm I'm hearing you say that, and then it, it makes me think about you know me sharing with you my experience with the with the meditation. Mm. Oh and, yeah, and like, bro, the that's what, see, going back to one of those things you be doing. You be hearing your friends do. You be like, yeah, bro, I, I did a meditation like a month for ten ten days. I was like, that's what's up. I ain't never doing that, bro. <laughs> it, be, it, be, it be stuff y'all be sharing like it be deep and and like. Wow, and I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, man, Kim. I said, Kim, advice? She supported something like that? I said, yeah, y'all meant to be. Y'all meant to be. Cause my <laughs> wife, no, don't bring a monk for 10 day ministry. The boy ain't there. Yo, that was the most excruciating and enlightening experience. But and I, I'm being honest, I don't think I could physically do it though. When you said you were sitting crisscross applesauce Indian style for 10 hours plus, bro, per day. Nah, bro, not, with these knees and these hips, not happening, bro. Listen, I would have to adjust sometimes the way I was sitting because the, the crisscross applesauce was killing me, and then I would do like... But, just, but, but I want to be clear, bro, about the 10 hours yeah. a day. So how many times did you get up on average from sitting Indian style? All right, so the run, so you wake up at 4... In the morning. In the morning. But okay. you ain't got no TV or phone or nothing. There's no that. sense of time. They ring a gong. Boom. Oh, man. And so now you, because you lose sense of time, you get trained. You start, your mind starts to count the gongs. Are you in a room like this? Or you got a bed? Like what, like what you got? They give you sleeping quarters. By like a private one. I'm private. Sure. Away from every, you know. Like What's like the size of this? No. It's not this big. It's probably Dang. half of this. Bruh. You got like a bathroom, a place to take a shower, and your bed. Yeah. Right. There's okay. no nothing. What was the purpose, bro? What was the purpose? Listen, my my wife did it before. She <laughs> my wife did it before. Okay, that's all. So she, be honest. To be honest, bro, you gotta say nothing else. 
Got she it. was like, yo, are you open to doing this thing? And you know me, Shit. a dog, being a you know, alpha dog, just like, oh, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. I don't know if that's alpha dog, but go ahead. But just the challenge. Okay, challenge. Okay. You could do I could do that. People be drop people be dropping. I ain't dropping nothing. Who, who why they can't do that? I could do mm. it. Cool. Okay. Let's sign up. So sign up. What you mean? Sign up? Wow. It was like, yeah, hand in all your stuff. I'm like, yeah, y'all, y'all married for what? life. Y'all married for life. About? You wake up at four. You meditate from the time you wake up until the first meal is at six thirty in the morning. Six thirty in the morning. You eat your meal at six thirty. You go back to meditate. Right. You meditate. Until your second meal, your last meal for the day, which is at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's the last meal of the day. Yep, 11 o'clock in, 11 the, o'clock morning. in the morning. And you're eating whatever they brought. Like, no choice in the matter. You have no choice in the food. So you only eat. And this is what you learn just about the way. Monks is gangster, bro. I, don't, I have a whole newfound respect. They live off of the charity that they receive from people. Right, so I didn't have no choice in the food I was eating, or the taste, or the seasoning, or the texture. I, none of that, whatever was there. And you can't speak to, you can't in, interact with nobody there. You can't speak. You, I mean, you ain't even really supposed to look at nobody. It's just you have to observe what they call uh, noble silence. Don't make noise. Just don't do anything that's alarming or disruptive to anybody. Don't be wearing. Scents and using all sorts of smell goods and stuff like just be mm. vanilla. It's like funky. that episode. Y'all, y'all was funky. Bro. Some people was funky, not me. Right. Now okay. I remember it's like I'm that episode of Martin that. where he was went to the went to the joint <laughs> with the app, bro. You remember that episode of Martin? I forgot. Uh, what was his name? Uh, brother, brother from the fifth floor. Nah, bro. When, he, when Martin was bugging out and went to that little place with the monk, and they went to he had half his hair, the afro half. <laughs> oh, I and, forgot. And what he it, was going through a traumatic thing with right, Trina, with, right. with Gina at the time. Yeah, Yo, yeah, but you go there, so you eat at eleven. You have a break, of like for an hour or so, from like twelve to one. You back to meditate until now. If it's your first time sitting, they will allow you to have tea. At five, mm-hmm. you're meditating from one to five. Right, they might give you fifteen minutes or a little bit of time to like go use the bathroom or something, but five. Then from five on, which is what is on? Which is on five to what eight? From, no, because you go to sleep at ten o'clock. Okay, well when are you? Well, I, Chris, well, we, let's focus on what we focus on. Crisscross applesauce. How long after five are you still in that position? You're going to sit every t- when you so go- when you go to have the tea, one to five tea after the tea. Until what time? You're in you're in meditation until from after five you meditate. You might be able to get a break. I think it's at nine o'clock. Yeah, and then for the last hour they allow you to. You know, it's like a bad promo. You know that, right? <laughs> you know, like after people listen to this, they're never going to that program. Like like the last hour, you could sort of be save more it. relaxed. But save it though. Awareness. You said that you did this. And your awareness got heightened. The awareness got heightened because I didn't. What I learned is that we are addicted to sensation mm. as people. So everything we think, everything we feel is the result or the projection of a sensation. So what I learned and what I what I know to be true is everything that we think and feel, every time there is a sensation. Two things happen in the body. One, your breathing becomes abnormal. So it changes. It speeds up or it slows down. Mm -hmm. It becomes heavy. The second thing is something biochemically happens. So uh, a a flutter or you feel warm or you feel hot or you feel a jolt or you feel itchy or something is happening connected to Mm -hmm. the sensation. Mm -hmm. And so because we don't understand the power of choice... We feel like we have to react. The habitual nature of the mind is to react to everything. 
Mm. When you're sitting that long and your legs fell asleep an hour ago and you still got two hours of sitting, there's a certain level of pain that your body starts to experience that because your mind has no distraction, it can't go nowhere. So it's your body is on a, like sirens is going off crazy. But I want to I want to go back to the power part though, like the power part because when it comes to awareness, separate of understanding that the sensations that we're responding to, my biggest challenge even as a coach is that all I'm trying to help you to see on some level of awareness based on what the person is, right? Because we don't we're not doing a monk session, but based on what I got in my toolbox to get them to see themselves as best as I can, is that you're giving your power away. Absolutely. I just want you to know you're giving your power away to porn, you're giving your power away to women, you're giving your power away to your mama, your daddy, your spouse, your kids. Like you're letting that define you. You're letting that, you have given that power. So now they influence or it influences what you do and don't do on a regular basis, even if it's from a subconscious space. It is because you're reacting to because you don't know that you don't have to. Mm. You don't know that you can endure this experience. And survive and come out on the other side. Do you, do you know because of that, I was with my wife for 22 years. I've been with my wife for 22 years. I didn't start to hear her until like year 20. Hmm? What do you mean? Like hear her heart, like, like really hear it. Underneath what she was saying on the surface level. Because... I was yearning her validation for my own identity so for so long. So everything she would say, because I needed her response to validate my existence, I wasn't hearing her heart. I was processing, I need to fix it, because if I fix it, she'll love me. She'll value me. She'll give me sex. She'll whatever. So I never really heard her, though. And so her frustration with me, for years, bro, I've been saying this for a long time. You don't be hearing me. Bro, I'm just like, I'm just two years in on like, that's what you mean. Because I had, <laughs> and I'm only hearing her because I finally let go of her validating who I am and took that power back. Mm -hmm. So not, so like she done had years of stress of me like, good guy, showing up. Going to work, but we lack the level of intimacy that we both desire, not because we both didn't want deep intimacy with each other. It's because I wasn't here, and it's not because I wasn't trying. It's because I couldn't because I had the mental block of I, I, am, I need your validation so much because my little boy that's so insecure about my own self-worth needs to, I have identified that I need my wife to be loving on me a certain way for me to be a man in my own identity yep. as a man. And if I'm not getting that, I'm in fight or flight mode. So whatever you bring up, I'm in my mode is simply on fix it because I get back to that validation that I, I, I'm i desperately yearning that sensation again. And I, and I have convinced myself I can only get that from her. And so because of that, she's like talking to me and I'm not even there. She's talking to him. I'm not even hearing him because I'm like on, okay, let's get to the point or let me get to the fix or let me. And she's like, you know what? You're not even really even listening to me. And here's the crazy thing. My desire is to listen to her. Just, And that's the crazy part because just because you have a tool don't mean you know how to use it. Come on, preach, preacher. Right? So you can know something intellectually. If I gave you a katana sword, you ain't going to use it like Leonardo. You're going to have to yeah. be with split. You got to get in the lab and learn how to use it. So, and again, we don't have spaces where we feel safe enough to even say, I don't know how to do this. And people don't understand. They think they, some people say you don't know. You think you know something because you learned the information of it. Or some people say, you know, because you use it. I say, you don't know it unless you grow it. Yep. So like, uh, I don't really know a thing. Unless I'm in the thing and I'm growing the thing. You have to that experience I'm, it. No, I'm going to another level of that's what people are saying that you really know something, that I got experience with something. But if you really know a thing, you not only just know it from an intellectual perspective, you not only know it from an experiential perspective, but you actually take the thing and you grow it 
Mm, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't just have an experience. Oh, yeah, I was there that time. Yeah, man, I was there. I was there. But the person that took it, that orchestrated it, that put it together, they really understood what it really was. You're doing some Magneto taking them. You, you get what you're I'm doing, saying? alchemy at that point. Come on. So now, like, I really know. So now, because I'm hearing my wife, I can really see my wife. Now I'm really growing my wife. And she's growing me. You give us now. We was growing, coaching each other this whole time. Don't get it twisted, but there's levels to everything. Absolutely. You know what I mean. And so as we're growing through this, I'm like, yo. And she's growing me of the of the area in my life that I need development to be a better support person. You know what I mean? In a real way. You know what I mean? Because I've always been a leader, but I suck at like I'm a great leader, but I'm a terrible worker. I'm a trash worker. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like I get something done. But my wife is showing me, like, there's a season in my life where now I need you to be a real supporter in a real way, in a different way that you're not used to, that you're not accustomed to. You know what I'm saying? You got to give yourself the so grace I don't really, to, I don't really know. to build I, capacity. Yeah, in. so I don't really know support until I sit in a row as a supporter and I grow the thing as a supporter. Mm -hmm. Now I really know support because I understand the power of it. You understand it contextually. You understand it intimately. You want to. Yeah. 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 You know and now saying? you, now it equips you with the tools to become more effective at the calling mm. of leading, coaching. Yes. Yeah. Right? So it's, 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 a, it's a, it's like a cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So you go through some things. Um, I, and I'm just speaking for myself too. Like, Growing personally always shows up in the work, mm. right? Like who I am personally, internally, the work I do internally always ends up manifesting itself in my relationships and the things that I do, right? And so. And I think it's, it's, it, that speaks to the, the law of integrity, right? So John Maxwell's 16 Laws of Communication, the law of integrity just talks about, like I, I only work with athletes and kids for so long until five years ago, but I didn't have, I didn't have credibility to speak to adults in a real way that was in leadership to navigate life while you're leading until now. So now it's like I had to really go through that so I could have integrity with my information that I'm giving you, not philosophically. I got something off of Google uh, oh, or AI. Right. So now people are hearing the, the substance and the essence so they can receive it better because they're like, nah, he know it. He, yeah, you've been, you've been, you can tell, you've you you been up for 22 years or you, you raped both of your kids. Yeah. I, a grown person, you don't have to explain certain things to them. Y'all been married how long? Oh yeah. You've been through it. Yeah. Both of your kids. Oh yeah. You, you did how many? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an invisible wisdom. I don't know. I don't need no ad now. You know what I mean? I have to convince nobody of anything. Like those people could just look at the fruits and be like, "Yeah, coach, I, I need I need to lock in with you." So, so what was, so what inspired you to now like say, "Okay, it's time to like give birth to the game plan." Like what? Like was it all of these? Was it a culmination of all it of was. these things, or was it? It was. It was. A, I was. I was uh, convicted. Probably about two, about 10, 10 plus years ago to work with my wife, right? So I would drop little hints, but I was still a hustler mode from the, from the from the country country uh, trailer parks of Oklahoma, like little hustler mode of everything, right? <laughs> and she was like, "I'm a CPA cum laude, and I'm a I'm a GPA O laude." You know what I mean? So she's like CPA. She is international business. She's working for the top major five auditing and accounting firms in the world. So she's usually to operate administratively on a level. And I'm like, yo, we just going to get out here and get busy. She's like, no, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to give up my career working with you. And you operate haphazardly with a hustle mentality. You don't have your stuff together. And so, but I was fully convinced that I was supposed to be working with my wife. Like God spent time with God. Boom. But my lack of discipline, respect, uh, experience, like I just lack so many things. And over the past 10 years was like the culmination of my career as a leader and coach that says, what make game plan so powerful is that me and my wife are business partners. Mm. So it's the best thing I've ever created in my life because it's the comprehensive thing of 
all these years of working as a leader and coach in organization development and people development, but also my wife's dynamic skill set that she having an executive and accounting and auditing and, and spreadsheets and equations. It's like her 15 years of that. And now she's a COO. Like, so both of those are combined. And for her to say, listen to me, this right here, you should be doing this training to everybody that's in leadership because no, everybody that wants to be a leader and then everybody who's in it is saying, this thing is fast and furious. Like you got to be really locked and loaded, ready to do this thing. So it's like, I know it's good. I know it's valuable, but what makes it special is that me and my wife are full business partners doing it. So yeah, it's, and it's, it's it has to hit different uh, yeah. when you connect it to it in that way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, you, you can't microwave mm. that level of connection and understanding. And there is, I, I'm learning that there is something to timing. Oh, bro. I, I, I'm so, I can't, I can't understand how humble and grateful I am because a lot of things that I'm doing, I desired long years ago, but God in his infinite wisdom allowed my life to go down a road in a way that I had to pay more. But my dreams was too big for my current behaviors and habits. I said, people have hopes and dreams and goals and ambitions, but you are your habits. Mm. So a lot of times you have big, big dreams, but you got cheap habits. And so God had to orchestrate. A, I'm not a type of person. You tell me something, I'm going to do it. You have to put me in a pressure cooker and I adjust. So I needed <laughs> 10 years of certain levels of pressure in my life to develop the habits that I have now. And, and, and two of them are, are gratefulness and humility. And I think that has broken a lot on uh, what I'm doing now with people because I, I because my yes, I got that dog and I, I got that push and I got the visionary and strategist and skill set. But now I got a certain spirit that I, I've never had before. Servant leadership. Yeah. So yeah. so tell me a bit about. You know, it is special to you. You said it's your baby. Yeah, it is. It's my third child. But, but, but what? <laughs> Very but like, what is what is the game plan? It is a it? it is a uh, eight week uh, accelerated intensive personal development program for motivated and driven leaders and entrepreneurs. All right. Um, so you're a person who've already got some success. You've already got responsibilities. You're you're grown. You're over thirty years old. And you fully understand that I got achievements, but I don't have fulfillment. Like I'm a public success and a private failure. Mm. Like I got money in the bank, but I got um, nothing in my spirit. I got nothing in my home. I got nothing in my, my personal life is lacking. And I don't have a blueprint, a guide, a accountability, a, a habits to get it back on track, to go on track and to get to my destination. Like I have none of that. And so what I'm also going to give you is like a blueprint, like a literal, like videos, script, like what to do, how to do, not just talk to you. And then you're going to have a process that you're going to go through that with a cohort. So, yeah. So direct access to you, direct access to the community. The whole, so I'm doing all, I'm, 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 I'm doing all the calls. Mm. Cause people, what I learned over the years, people don't want my assistant. They want me. Right. So I do all the calls and I do the accountability group. Mm. So they so separate of all the information, you get me literally locked in for sixty days because it's so intense and it's so much of me that I'm giving as well that I have to take a break after sixty days. So we just so do sixty sense. day cohorts. Does anybody that that been coaching knows mm -hmm. a burnout is real? Yeah, yeah. Especially ones that really lock in with their people like that. Yeah, and my and I thank God for my wife because. I, the, the the curriculum that we put together was something I've been, you know, based on customization of what the person's situation was. I've been doing it with clients for 10 plus years, but she put it all in one program. That's why I said, like, you have to be ready to sit in the seat and t like you need to explain to people that's in your private life. Like, hey, I'm joining the game plan. So 60 days I'm going to be off the grid. Yeah. Yeah. You got to kind of kind of prepare people in your world. You know what I mean, it's only for serious people. It's not for a novice is not for somebody who's just trying to figure out what they want to do. It's somebody who knows they're good, they're talented, but they're not fulfilled. And they know they need another level of structure and accountability and a blueprint to help them get the like the fullness of what's inside of them. Mm. And so what, 
what are the types of results that you're seeing be created? It's sorts of transformations you're seeing be. Well, one of my biggest things that I, I try to help any adult understand is stop lying. A lot of <laughs> like one, very one, simple, but yeah, yeah. Like one of the biggest things working from kids, kids are very fearful. And adults just, I haven't met an adult, I haven't met one client yet who doesn't lie on some level. And and the biggest lie they do is to themselves. And so a lot of it is getting you to stop lying. Like your credit sucks. You're overweight. You, you don't have intimacy in your marriage. Stop making up these stories. Mm. You know what I mean? Like show me your savings account. Show me your investment account. You broke. You live check to check. Like you undisciplined. You got bad habits. Why, why, why take it offense? And so everybody can't handle just the truth. Because think about if if, you, if you're an adult, most adults lie, and you've been lying all this time. The truth offends you mm-hmm. because you colluded a whole entire social fabric of your success of your living space to hang with the lies that you've been creating. So you got people hanging with you on a lie that you done told them. And people don't want to be found out. No. That's that's why you and your spouse bump heads. They really know the real you to keep it a buck. Mm. And when they call you out, you get all in your feelings. That's why I say everybody can't even really handle my coaching. Because they don't want to stop lying. So as a lot of it's like stop lying so we can do some real work. And you get some real results. Get out your own way. Yeah. Cause that's the biggest. That's the biggest hurdle we're gonna face in this process. It ain't gonna be nothing else but you. Hmm. You're the biggest possibility, but you're also the biggest problem. Yeah, if you're the problem, you're the solution. Come on, you just gotta come to the awareness, and then you giving them the exact blueprint. What it, to it, do? It works if you work it, bro. Yeah, it works if you work. Let it. me tell you something. And I'm not just saying this because this is my brother right here. <laughs> the crumplers have something intangible. Mm. Individually, they have something very special. Them, Nick, Chris, but together. Mm. It's, it's um, when somebody says the it factor, like you just mm. have it. Mm. Y'all have it. Oh, thank you, bro. I received that. But I know it doesn't come. It, it's it's a, it's it's a cultivated it. Mm, it is. It's it a is. cultivated. Yes. And we're not who we used to be twenty two years ago. Not who you was two years ago. Two right? years ago, my guy. Yeah, you go. Yeah. Right. And I'm blessed to be able to see the growth and the evolution. Right. And Ten so plus like, years. But bro, listen, y'all working together. That is. Yeah, and we work together on everything now, as you know. Yeah, but that, but that type of synergy mm-hmm. is like, because here's the thing: God has all these things. God has revealed to me that He just prepared me to let her do what she's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, is my wife is, my wife is way more powerful than me. Like, my wife is like a juggernaut. She, she's beastie. Like, she's a monster. She's like that. But people really don't know. Only those who know. If you know, no. you know, if you know, you know, <laughs> but like the public don't really know that right. she's an absolute monster. And so because I've been more in the public for 20 years, pro athlete, speaking all over the place, leader of all organizations. My wife has always been in the background, always been in the background. And, and part of God getting me to a place where he's getting me is to be prepared to release my wife to the world. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Hands down. My wife is, is she cannot be a secret no more. Yeah, one of the things that I'm noticing in my journey is just how much leadership is understanding that you work for other people. Mm, facts. And your job is to elevate and develop the people around you and grow the people around you. And that's your role as a leader now, the stuff that comes with it. And, and as a coach and a leader, my wife has been my greatest student. Like I've coached her, she's coached me, but I'm a knucklehead student, so she's been very frustrated with me. But when I coached her and then I doubled down four years ago, say I'm gonna coach you on all the executive side, like my wife is the greatest student I've ever had. So I like I'm like, you my wife, but like she, what makes her so powerful, she's such a great student and she's such a great learner. So it's like 
And I love to see my students get success. That's one thing. If you know if you're a coach, you really get a kick out of seeing that's the satisfaction. Like your students doing their thing. And so that's why I know I'm really a coach, but for my wife, man, she is a she's a juggernaut, man. Hands down. I love that. So one of the things, uh one of the things I've been I've been asking all of the the family and friends and guests on is like if you could if you could impart one perspective, one mentality, one mindset, even a thought mm. to help forward somebody listening in their journey, what would that be? Uh, whatever reason this quote came to me, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm. Um, so the best way to get there is um, su submitting to others, serving others, building others. Um, sacrifice is not a bad word. So, uh, but yeah, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So everybody's on this. I'm trying to get mine, trying to do me. I'm trying to find ways to help serve other people so that we can win and we can get there. You know what I mean? I think that fundamental shift of the, in approach before I even say a word has really been blessing me these past two years, bro. These past two years in particular, man, I couldn't even conjure up the opportunities, the access I've been getting. And all of it's been, now I'm grateful you guys are bringing me on your podcast now, but all of it's been behind the scenes of just blessing people yep. you know, in a real way too. No, I've seen it, so I, 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 you ain't capping. I get it. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, but that's what, that's what I've been doing, but I just think now the level of great, gratefulness of to do it. Like there's no resentment in my heart to serve. There's no, dang, what's my time coming though, God? I'm tired of serving. Because remember right. I told you that yeah. when I first moved here, I had resentment in my heart of seeing other yep. people win. I remember. But I don't I don't have any of that in my heart now. I, I it truly is an honor. No, that's love. Mm. Um so one last thing. You know, I'm a I'm a I, I believe that curiosity is one of the most important skills that we can develop mm. as people, right? Mm-hmm. Learning how to ask the right questions gets you to the mm -hmm. right answers. And so um, what I want to start doing is paying forward a question. And so what I mean by that is I'm going I'm to ask you to, based on where you are right now, mm. what is one question that you want to leave for a future guest to answer? <laughs> Um, man, I hate that you're so smart and deep. Um, what's a what's a question? So this I is a question ask, that a future guest is going to answer. A future guest is going to answer. The question would be: I, This is the first time I've been asked this. So yeah, the quality of questions to get the quality of answers. I love this. Um, Stop lying. Who do you need to be? Honestly, who do you need to be um, to be the person you want to be? Mm. Like, who do you need to be to be the person you want to be? I like and that. just be and just be honest, though. You know, like my biggest thing is like really helping people. Yeah, facts and truth, but stop lying and be honest. Like that really helps move out the gray i like that yeah my brother let the people know where they can find you learn more the king about coach yeah. the king coach uh coach crump.com to get any information you want to know about me as a speaker as a coach as a consultant but also the game plan uh, you can follow us on instagram at the game plan uh we don't have rolling enrollment so you can join the wait list for the next one in the new year um on 2024 we'll have some cohorts uh, but yeah man tap in with your boy Appreciate you, man. Uh, you already know. You already know. We had to make this happen. Long yeah. time. Long time in the works. Uh, Y'all yeah. know me. I'm the one with tongue on everything. Um, I'll see y'all on the next pod.